All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and we are on episode six of the American Football Series with the Houston Dynamo, and it is MLS Cup Final Week. Um, we are trying to really do the double, as I've already we've already won the U.S. Open Cup, and now we're trying to win the league championship, and our opponent is Atlanta United, and they are probably a much better team than we are. Um, now, it's going to be a huge challenge for us. But before we get into the bad news, let's look at some good news. Um, so our bank balance, we'll go to finances real quick just to see. We've got quite a bit of money in the bank. So I thought, hey, we've had a great year. Now's the time. Let's go to the board and ask them to improve our facilities. And boom, training facilities. We now have a, uh, a $1.2 million upgrade that will begin at the end of the season. And it'll finish around in May of next season. So that's good news because to me, um, when you take over an MLS club, the priority is is training facilities, getting the guys that you have now to where you can max them out. Um, it, for a few reasons, I, I prioritize that over like youth. It's just because I really don't know what impact youth facilities for the MLS clubs has on the, the youth intake. Maybe it has quite a bit to do with it. I don't, I'm not sure, but it's there's so much hard coding in the MLS and they really have not told much about it. I, I think they just kind of don't want to, right? That, that's at least my, um, that's how I read the situation, right? Is, is if, <laughs> if it helped you to upgrade your facilities, um, to do all those things, then it seems like they would tell you that, you know, they would say, yes, with the hard coding in MLS, that's still how you get the best players. And maybe it is, but they've not really made that statement definitively. So, um, so I personally, I prioritize the training facilities. Um, that's my, you know, the first place I go to upgrade. And we've got a night. I mean, one point two million dollars got to be a good upgrade. So, so that'll be done early next. Well, maybe middle of next season. Um, all right. So that's good news. Other good news, our B club, Rio Grande Valley. We'll 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 quick look. They one USL D3 uh, you can see in the final there against Knoxville SC they took the away leg three to two and then drew the home leg to bring home the uh, D3 the USL D3 championship and they will now be moving up to the United Soccer League next season so that's good you know news for the um, for our B club or our two club uh, Dynamo Academy they didn't do terrible. They finished third in the USS, USSDA, the United States Soccer Development Academy. We'll quickly look at the, um, this was their, the Frontier Division standing. So they finished third um, behind another one of our affiliates, the Dynamo Youth. Dynamo Academy is our official affiliate. Dynamo Youth is, an, is another affiliate, which that is, that's all real life. Um, so the Dynamo Youth actually won the Frontier Division and our academy finished third. They went to the USSDA uh, championship tournament, whatever you want to call it, um, and our youth that finished third, but then our official academy finished second in the group, which meant they were eliminated. Only the winners of each group go on to the quarterfinals. So, so they held their own, you know, finished second behind Orlando City's academy. Um, so that's how the, the affiliates went. <clears throat> So let's look at what we're dealing with here. Um, this is our squad. Obviously, we've had injury issues. We've already covered that. Although I don't remember mentioning Leonardo. Leonardo got himself hurt um, out for the rest of the season. I uh, I hate Leonardo. I hate him in real life. Um, hate's a strong word. I do not like him as a player in real life. And so maybe because of that, maybe that FM could feel my, you know, the, the game could sense my animosity towards Leonardo and decided to stick it to me by injuring him. And so I don't have Leonardo, which means I'm starting Funmayor and De La Garza at, at center back. Um, Remick is well enough to play. He's at 100% condition, but obviously his, his uh, match sharpness is low. So he's not fully fit. Um, yeah, so that's the situation. I am going to bring Alvarez in for Alexander. And, and Alexander in for Arter. Yeah, that's just going to strengthen my bench a little bit. 
So, you know, front five, I feel like I'm okay, right? From Cabezas, Martinez, Pena, Martinez, or Minotas, uh, Elise. That's a pretty good setup there. Hamit at, you know, sweeping things up behind them and in front of the back line, that's good. But my back line is, is not great. <laughs> so we're not great shaped back in the back line. Atlanta United, on the other hand, we'll look at them. This is a really good team. Um, they're pretty good everywhere. And they'll probably, they've got Vasquez starting here, but I really don't think they'll start Vasquez. Martinez is the guy who they'll probably start, which means because he's not that great of a header. He doesn't, he doesn't terrify me as a header. I'm going to be able to force their wingers wide, isolate them out wide, and then just, hey, let them thump crosses in all day because I don't, I don't, Martinez doesn't worry me as a header, so as a target man. <clears throat> so we'll see if that works, but the reality is is that front to back, Atlanta United is probably better than me. Um, and you know, you've got Guzan in the goal, which I'm not I'm not this huge believer in Guzan in real life, but um, in FM, he's probably the best keeper in the league. Um, he's certainly up at the top three or four. And so, yeah, I, if I'm being honest, I don't think I'm going to win this game. This is the kind of game where I, I could see going into 5-0. to zero. It's one of those where if I don't play it perfect tactically, I'm going to lose by a lot. And that usually happens because I'm not like this tactical mastermind. Um, so, But we'll see what happens, right? So we'll go into the game. And I decided what I'll do is, um, I guess go through like what do I look at tactically and um, I have a little cheat sheet or whatever of, of adjustments that I make I have it put on my iPad I have already I have, we'll look briefly at my set pieces but I've already kind of set them up how I want them um, we'll do our pep talk first um, uh, got the relax for your natural game and hey guys I have faith in you the ones that didn't respond well to the overall team talk. And then we'll go to tactics. So set pieces, um, real quick, we'll look at, um, I've got my takers as I want them. I've got Martinez taking um, my corners. And you say, well, wait a minute, why isn't Alton top? He's got a higher rating. Well, if you look at my corner kicks, the way I kind of have them set up, I don't have a great heading team. So I try and um, set them up for the, you know, the outside the area balls and my lurk outside the area I want that to be my best shooter and Alton top is my best shooter he's got a 17 in long shots so if he's gonna pop one from out while outside um, he's got a better chance than anyone else so that's why I let him lurk and Martinez take the free kick so I've got free kicks set up how I want them um, we'll look now at opposition instructions and this is an area where um, I will make a few changes here and there. So as I said, they did start Martinez, which means I'm okay with forcing the left wing on his left foot and the right wing on his right foot. Get them further away. Let them be try to lob in balls into the area. Um, that will hopefully give my center backs time to set up uh, and, you know, just create a better situation for me because either they're just going to have to drop it back or they're going to launch in a cross, which Martinez is probably not going to be able to win. Um, I am going to tight mark Martinez. <clears throat> and I think, I don't think, I, I, Almiron is, he's a good playmaker. Um, I think he leads the team with assists with not, well, no, no, sorry, I'm sorry. The two wingers have way more assists, but Almiron as far as a playmaker he's I'm more worried about him out there but the reality is Nagby I can't I can't leave Nagby so because you've got two guys Nagby and Almiron that is a that is a just an absolutely menacing midfield combination um and so I can't really focus on one okay? so I'm going to try and force both of them on their weaker feet and see what happens all right and then I'll, I'll close down the back line the defensive mid as I do as usual um other adjustments, 
for this, because my back line is not as strong as I would like them to be, I am going to drop them back a little bit. It, it drops my closing down, but I've got all my individual players set on the closing down I would like. I'm also going to go a little narrower. I want to be narrower than them uh, in, this, in this case. So that's what I'm going to try and do because they've got guys out wide. I feel like, well, maybe if we be a little narrower, we can attack through the middle, see what happens. Um... I may end up dropping down to standard, <clears throat> but because I'm at home, I want to try and play control and see how that works. And so, hey, this is um, <laughs> this is one of those deals where I don't I'm, I don't feel comfortable. You know, sometimes I feel comfortable about the way I have things set up, but because of how good this team is, how much better they are than me, I'm not going to be comfortable. Um, yeah, played well. Just because they're not scoring doesn't mean he's not playing well. Both teams come into this one in good form. Um, yeah, they're as good as they come. Be able to cause us one or two problems. <clears throat> so here we go. This is it for the MLS Cup. And usually these, nothing comes out of these kickoffs. Doesn't look like they're pressing too hard, which is good for me. That m probably means I'm good with my control setup. And off the top of the shot that got blocked. That's why I have it set up that way. Minotas, Martinez. Oh, hmm. <clears throat> Couldn't get anything through. Got to credit them for that. Um, they were organized well <clears throat> on that free kick. Yeah, I, um, that was a hopeful ball. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm looking how I'm set up. Pretty good. Everybody's in the spaces that I want them in, and it creates this. Oh, hmm. It's all right. It's so far so good. I'm really surprised. If I can win this game, if I can win this. Oh, Martinez, they were up 1 0. Boom. Beautiful ball. Now here's where I got it. I my my natural tendency is to go a little more defensive. Cabezas with the ball to Elise, who finds Martinez. That's beautiful. But I don't want to rush. I want to rush and and do something foolish. Now Cabezas is getting a yellow card. That's awesome. I don't know how you guys feel about hard tackling. I do it with all my front five, right? My two center mids, my and my front three, all tackle hard until they get a card. Okay, nice win by Alton Top Minotas back to Remick to Martinez. I'm also tempted to go retain possession, but let's get another goal. Or or well, let's to Martinez go. Oh, he's got a brace and we're up two nothing. Okay, okay, but oh man, 20 minutes. There's so much time left. See, we are just, that is beautiful. That's how I want to play. We're attacking all the spaces correctly. You don't really see Atlanta changing much. But we'll see. Oh, that clock can't move fast enough. All right, here we go again. Minotas to Cabezas. Martinez gets the ball taken. Zizo. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, save by sights. Okay, so they are coming at me a little more. So let's. Oh, let me get this out of here first. Okay. No, wait, wait. Pause. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Let's go standard. Raise the tempo a little bit. Retain possession. Be more expressive. Be more expressive. The idea there is, um, you know, the other team's going to be coming at me a little more. So I hope that the, the expression creates more chances because they'll they'll be there. And here we go. Okay, ten minutes and a half. Throw in to Elise Minotas. Yeah, they are definitely coming at me a little more. Get wide. Get it wide. You got a man out there. Ooh, shot handled by Guzan. Oh man. These are the games that kind of make FM fun. <laughs> and my 
Martina is a remic to Elise. Pena couldn't handle that. Mm. Could have got that down to your feet. All right. Okay. Whew. Martinez is absolutely. Martinez has said, you know, I'm going to win this game for us. Let's look quickly at um, stats. I do feel like Elise is getting a little too far forward. But can't complain much about the rest of the shape. We get the stats. <clears throat> All right, so st stats. Orjuela's pass percentage is a concern, but he has created chances. Okay. Just looking at the numbers. I mean, these are mostly good. Passing is the big one that I look at here. Um, that's all going pretty well. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to make any rash changes, but I am going to go to Remick and let's let him dribble last. I usually do this at the beginning of the game anyway, but I figured, what the heck. <sighs> All right, I'm going to let him stay wider for now. Uh, Orjuela's passing is not doing very well, so I'm going to let him go fewer risky passes. And... Let's have him close down a little more. I don't know why he's that low on closing down. What was Remix? And yeah, that must have been something where I outthought myself. Sometimes I do that. I'll, I'll think too much and do something stupid. So I'm going to try avoiding doing that, but I'm going to be thinking about dropping to standard or dropping from standard to counter just to be a little more safe with everything. So let's tell the guys. Very happy, obviously. What an exciting first half, but... You know, I was, I can remember 2009, one of the most depressing days in my life. The, um, the Confederations Cup. Probably you guys already, already know what I'm talking about. Um, the U.S. shocked Spain in the semifinal. Oh, Orjuela. Whew. Kid's young. That's the problem. He's young, but I, <sighs> he's probably going to be the guy I sub out. Oh, Pena, close on that corner. All right. Yeah, he's probably going to be the one I sub out first at the 60-minute mark. Delgado's not like a veteran, Marky Delgado, but he's 22. I think or Orjuela's like 18 or something. No, he's 22 also. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Martinez. Martinez is the only guy I have that can actually make a direct free kick. All right, so we've got a half hour to go. Do I go ahead and sub? I don't think so. Because if Atlanta comes back and ties this thing, i got to be thinking about penalty takers. All right, Fumayor out to Horo Horuela. I'll never be able to say his name right. Up and top to Martinez. Pena got Orjuela out wide. All right, we'll, we'll switch it, rotate it, circulate it. Get it out wide. There you go. Cross him, Minotes, and that is going to pretty much put the cup away. Minotes finishes a – this is beautiful. This is the kind of goals I love to see. We're all in the spaces that we want. Nice cross, and Minotes puts it away, and I'm going to win the MLS Cup. I am going to go ahead and sub. Um, I'm, going to leave, I'm going to leave Martinez in. And I'm going to bring in Marky Delgado, my right back. Martinez might be the next guy to take off. And Atlanta's gone. Atlanta's dropped off. I guess they, they're resigned to their fate. But honestly, that's how we let him sneak back in. And oh, yeah, let's let's go back to control and lower the tempo. Seventy-six. Yeah, let's bring in Gill for Martinez. That might be. I really hope that doesn't end up being a mistake. Eightieth minute, one more sub. 
Who do I want to bring in? Uh, let's bring in Kyoto. No, 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 not for Pena. Yeah, for Pena. Pena's got the lowest rating on the field, so. Sorry, kid. But Kyoto's a little more experienced. Okay, this is very exciting. I really did. This is the opposite of what I expected. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to say that it was all my tactical brilliance, but who knows? Oh, we almost made it four. <laughs> that would have been epic. My team played perfectly. As I recall, I seem like, I don't remember, we played Atlanta once this year in the regular season, and it seemed like we had a result kind of like this. Kabizas wins it. And we're just going to knock it around, see it out. To Delgado, drops to Fumayor to Cabezas. Actually, I Cabezas. And that's it. We are the champions. What an exciting, I mean, just a dominant performance. Um, very happy. I, I, I don't even want to look at the stats. I just, I can't, this is, <laughs> I, um, yeah, great win to win that in the first season when our team is not anywhere close to where I want them to be. That's a huge result. So, um, yeah. So let me look real quick. We'll compare that to the original, the first game playing it. Yeah, here it is. We well, we won at Atlanta two to one. So then to come here to the final, and get a three nothing dominant win. I mean, look at my results the last, like in the playoffs. That's not three to two, two to one. There was no reason to believe that I was going to come out and have a performance like this. We really we struggled against Minnesota. You guys saw struggled against Sporting Kansas City, but came out today and absolutely dominated. Um, so, MLS Cup champions. Um, that means now we are going into the off season. Um, just a quick look at the squad. Obviously, De La Garza, we've got to get him replaced. Alton Top, I'm thinking about cutting him. I've, as you can see, I've got him listed. Um, Cabezas is at that age where I really start looking to move players. I, I, 26, 27, 28, you know, anywhere between 25 and 30, that's when I really start looking to move a player. Um, you know, my I'm okay in the front three. Martinez... He's a good playmaker at 22. Um, and I've got stuff, I've got people behind Martinez. So, you know, I feel pretty good about that. I, I mean, depth. Like, uh, you know, Kyoto is 26. Again, that's when I start looking to move guys. I've got him listed to move. Uh, Alvarez is 32. So, creating some depth. You know, Winger's not, he's not good enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess not absolutely terrible, but, you know, moving him, moving Garcia uh, right back. The back line, the back line is priority. Uh, not only do we need depth, but I need guys that can play back there. Um, Lungvist is good, but aside from him, I mean, Orjuela is supposed to leave at the end of the season. I don't know if I want him back. Uh, he's pretty good, you know, but how much more is he going to improve? So do I even want to try and make his his loan permanent? Um, so those are all the things I got to think about going into the off season. Um, you know, life is good, but Remick's got to go. Is Jordan ready to be a backup? You know, he's only nineteen, and he's not. His ratings are not very high. He's a good tackler, but he's not good marking. His positioning is not good. So these are things he's got. We I got to evaluate at the beginning of next season. <clears throat> So, but still, you know, very exciting win. Um, yeah, it's um, it's great to win the first to win the cup the first year when you don't even really have the squad that you want. So, but next time we will um, probably will be a draft. We'll do the draft, and uh, we'll go over what I've done in the off season since. And so, this is Uncle Sam FM signing off. See you next time.